My name is Dusabe Larissa. I'm going to present about the rural water mapping using Phos4G in Rwanda. And I'm here with my colleague, Jeannie Garashi, a Phos4G software developer. And also, I did this presentation with Moise Ranghunda, our MIA specialist. So Rwanda is, be, is uh, located in the central eastern part of Africa. It has a population of 13 million, and for the last two decades, we had an economic growth of 7%, and it was ranked as this, one of the safest countries in Africa. So I work in WASAC. It's a water and sanitation corporation, and uh, this entity was set up to manage water and sanitation services in Rwanda. And we have a target to reach 100% household access with, with, to improved sources of drinking water by 2024. So WASAC is a state-owned enterprise. So it's under the Ministry of Infrastructure, and it has two, two main departments. The first one is urban water and sanitation services, and this department is a service provider to urban areas and Kigali, the capital city. And uh, the second department is rural water and sanitation services, which support the district, because in my country, rural water services are owned by the district, and uh, the rural water department comes in as a support. And for daily operation and maintenance, the district have contract with private operator to deliver services to the population. So in all, the department comes in to support both the district and private operators. So what we basically do, we develop guideline, operation and maintenance manual, management of monthly report, we help in service delivery, and also we do inventory and mapping of all water supply system. So how do we reach 100% access to water, to, to all household access to water supply systems? We, need, we needed to know the current asset we had. So to do so, the, a GIS database was created and all water supply system was inventoriated. And uh, this process was uh, supported by the project for strengthening the operation and maintenance of rural water supply system in Rwanda. It's a JICA project. So why is it important to map? Because in water supply system, we need to integrate. It helps to integrate with water access target, and it helps information being simultaneously available to relevant department, district authorities, and decision-making organs. It helps prioritize focus area and coordinate intervention. Because if you have a map of all your assets, you can easily localize areas with low access to water, to water infrastructure. And also, it helps in daily operation, maintenance, evaluation, and planning, which all of these contribute to increase the water accessibility. So this process was done in three phases. The first phase was about to the project implementation in project dis in a pilot district to assess the feasibility of the project. And uh, the second phase, it was applied to the entire country. And uh, the last phase was the vector tile implementation. So for data collection, the department allocated engineers each district to map, and uh, we had the training on GIS, GPS, and the entire country was mapped in nine months. So we used GPS, QGIS, QField, and PostGIS. And now all engineers can use QGIS. We have a centralized PostGIS database. Inventory report can be created in our system. We have a shape file for hydraulic simulation and Depanet data and Python script on open sources. So this is how the data collection was done. We use the GPS Garmin to collect the location and the Q field to collect the attribute information on each water supply system asset. And we use the satellite imagery autophoto to correct the, the GPS errors. And also it was merged to QGIS. And we use the geo package of the same data structure with PostGIS, so it was easy to copy and paste to the GIS database. 
and also because uh, some water supply system are in a remote area with low connectivity, so we needed to create offline access to the database. So it was done by running the Python script created by Gene to transform the GIS database to offline GIS data set and uh, upload it to Google Drive, and then any, any stakeholder can get it through the, his phone or the laptop. And also engineers keep updating the data on a, on a quarterly basis. So what we managed to achieve, first of all, all water supply system was mapped from source to the endpoint. And the data was cleaned so that we can minimize the human errors and facilitate hydraulic simulations. And also people can have access offline for daily operation and maintenance. Here we talk basically of private operators as they need it on daily monitoring and operation activity. And also we have offline data updating. The operation and maintenance is easy and monitoring and evaluation of water access it was made easier and uh, decision making organs, it helps decision making organs to plan accordingly. So for decision making organs, they don't need to go into details, technical details. So this system can create the inventory report for each district, which can be made available to the decision making organs and make their decision effective. So mapping is a continuous activity. So we mapped all assets of water supply systems such as pipeline, household connection, public tap, water kiosk, industrial connection, all type of chambers available on each water supply system. And from May when we started 2019, we recorded 1,058 water supply system, but for, as for August 2022, we've had 1,109 water supply system and the length due to rehabilitation, new construction of water supply system, we moved from 1,388 to 15,952. And uh, all this data can be available. And uh, this is our system structure for data collection. As I said, we use a GPS, QField and, Q and QGIS. We have a GIS database. And uh, the, there was a script to update vector tiles automatically to map box vector. And since map box is no longer an open source, we transferred to maplib. And also there is a way to get a, uh, offline access to the database. So this is how the database is designed. Every water supply system table is linked Every asset table is linked to the water supply system table, and every water supply system table is linked to the district table. So it's easier to manipulate and analyze the data wherever the area you want to focus on. And uh, every water supply system asset has attributes. For example, for pipeline, you have, we have material, we have the hour of construction, we have the pressure, we have the we have all the year of rehabilitation or attributes necessary for hydraulic simulation. So this is our data in QField. If you want to have access on it, you can scan this QR code. And also, there is a, we have OpenNet data, and uh, we can use QGIS, QWater plugin in QGIS for hydraulic simulation. So why did we choose vector tiles? Because it's light and fast to render map on browser, it's flexible to change the styling of map and operation cost is much cheaper. We have no operation cost. So this is the demo of our data. You can scan the QR to have access on it. And also we upgraded from a graphic user interface to map libre. And uh, you can install our app on uh, Android or Apple phone. So this system was developed by the JICA expert, Gini Garashi, and MIS specialist. And uh, you combined open source open data in P GitHub pages platform to publish the system for free of charge. And those stakeholders can see raw water supply network in the entire country and uh, automated 
update of vector tiles is done every week, and cost of operation and maintenance is free. So the challenge we encountered while uh, wanting to utilize the GIS, it's because of the cost, because we needed the license to have access on it, and we needed uh, to have our own server, we had poor internet. But the advantage of using open source and open data is that it's free of charge, it's open source, it doesn't require high skills, you can teach yourself, and also it makes the, it keeps the motivation to update as the budget available goes to the updating process and also the GIS administrator can concentrate more for the maintenance of the GIS database. So vector tiles are really important in the water sector because for engineers it can enhance the distribution management and it helps in reduction of non-revenue water and for plumbers it helps them get information without going to the field. And uh, for meter reader, it makes it efficient. And for customer care, they are able to provide accurate information to the client. And for the manager, they are able to make effective future planning and decision. And also, it allows the synergetic effect for future development. So, our data also are open data. It has been synchronized to Open Africa, so anyone can get access on it. So as a conclusion, development is about the, the lives people lead, and through the use of Phos4G, Rwanda has been able to assess, operate, maintain, monitor, evaluate, and plan for 100 percent water access, and we are really grateful for everyone who contributes to efforts 4 g as it allows developing country to have access to cutting edge technology. And these are the pictures of my country. If you have time, you can visit. It, we are very welcome. And Murakoze Chani, thank you very much for your attention.